Hello everyone. Let's continue our discussion on deriving the load curves for PMOS and NMOS. So we are done with step one, where we have where, where we have converted all the node voltages, let's say VGS, with the gate to source voltage of your PMOS as a function of V, and this is how it looks like. The next step is to convert the VDSP as a function of output voltage because that's the voltage that we are left with. So we will be converting the VDSP as a function of output voltage. So we have we have something as output voltage, we have something as input voltage, and we have the common drain current. So so we, we will be we will be getting the load curve or of a PMOS in that in that step. So so, so the next step is to convert your VDSP into into a function of output voltage and that's pretty simple if you if you just try to carefully look into this particular equation your v out is vdsp plus vdd so you just need to add your vdd to the vdsp and you can you can basically convert this complete curve into a function of v out so let's do that let's do that uh, uh, very slowly so we will have we'll move these curves to the left next step is to convert this whole curve this the, the y the x axis of vdsp as a function of v out so we'll write down that equation using using v out equal to vdd plus vdsp it's just a shift of vdd towards the left hand side and you get v out equal to vdd plus vdsp okay so now what if you carefully look into this equation it says that if your vdsp is let's say negative 2 volts let's say we'll take the extreme ones if your v vdsp is negative 2 volts you add a positive 2 volts to it you get your v out so, so when, when your VDSP is negative 2 volts, your V out is 0 and if your V out is 0, you see you see you lie somewhere at this point. Okay. Now, when once your V out is 0 and let's say your V in is 1.5, you see some finite value of current at this point of time. So for example, let's say VDSP was again negative 2 volts, VDD was positive 2 volts, your V out is 0 and let's say your gate voltage, the V in is 1.5. So, at V out equal to 0, you see a finite current flowing. And that the reason is pretty simple. The reason is the output capacitor. When you say V out equal to zero, it basically says that the output capacitor is completely discharged, and we need to charge the capacitor. So that this is the charging current of your capacitor. So let's try to draw the curve and explain it even even in a better way. So we have shifted this complete curve by a value of positive VDD. So for example, if your VDSP is zero. You just add VDD to the VDSP and your V out becomes 2 volts. So your V out becomes 2 volts. The so same current that you see at VDSP equal to 0, you will see an same amount of current when V out equal to when we at, at V out equal to 2 volts. And the reason is so over here if you see at V out equal to 2 volts, the current is 0. And that makes sense because whenever your V out is 2 volts, it says that your output capacitor is completely charged. And there is no flow of current that there is no charging current that's flowing to the output capacitor that's why your that's why there is zero current and as a result of that you see at output voltage equal to zero you see exactly zero current no matter what is the value of input and this is true only when pmos is in combination with nmos to form a cmos inverter okay in that case we are talking about this curves not as a, not as a pmos as an independent device things becomes a bit different when pmos is taken out of the cmos inverter and analyzed independently so we are not talking about that situation we are talking about a situation where pmos is is clubbed with nmos to form a cmos inverter okay so this is the case whenever your so let's let's take, we'll take one more example for example let's say your vd your, your v out is 0 volts okay whenever v out is 0 volts and we obtained v out equal to 0 volts at this value so whenever your negative vdsp is negative to the highest the maximum fullest potential attained by your drain voltage so if your negative vdsp is 2 volts if a negative vdsp is 2 volts your if you just add positive 2 volts to the to the equation your output voltage becomes 0 okay so your v out becomes 0 and at every gate voltage of v in you will see a finite amount of current whenever your v out is zero and the reason is whenever your output voltage is zero it means that your output capacitance is completely discharged and you need to charge that so this is the charging current of it okay so and and let's say we'll take one another example when your vdsp is one volts let's say negative one volts your v out becomes positive one volts which means if, if when we say it's positive one volts it means it's is half charged and it needs some amount of current to get charged and this is the value of current 
okay so this is how to look into this curve so the curves when it when it is looked from a C, from a pmos point of view it's a bit different but you need to give a different angle to the curves when you try to look it from a cmos inverter point of view and this is the angle that we are talking about so once we are done with the conversion of this of these graphs as a function of v in and v out and idsn we call it as a load curve this is this is what we call it as a load curve for pmos transistor now everything is a function of v in and v out and there is no dependency on vgsp or vdsp or even idsp so this is unique you have you have you have unique idsn you have v out voltage you have v in voltage the next step is to do the same thing for your for your nmos transistor and then we will be we, uh, we will be kind of on the same page so your pmos and nmos will be on the same page you have will have a curve for pmos which which looks something like this as a function of v in and v out we will have a curve for nmos which will be deriving in some time from now that will also be a function of v in and v out the next step is to just merge it and get the cmos voltage transfer characteristics okay so let's do step by step the step 3 in this one is to obtain the load curve for nmos transistor using above equations using these equations okay so so the load curve for nmos becomes pretty simple because your vgsn if you evaluate vgsn is v in minus vss and your vss is nothing but your ground potential so your vgsn is directly v in okay so it's it's very simple it's not a complicated as you see in the case of vgsp it's very simple vgsn is v in and vdsn is v out okay so so the curves for the deriving the load curves for nmos becomes pretty simple because of because of the nature of the equations and the reason for this one is that nmos is placed at the bottom so it's as good as your you're analyzing an independent nmos and your drain drain uh, node was connected to v out which is varying your gate was connected to v in which is again varying but but your but your source is connected to ground this is in contrary to pmos which has got a different node potential for source and drain so the things becomes complicated for pmos but in this case in case of an nmos your your vgsn is directly equal to v in your vdsn is directly equal to v out so the deriving the load curves for nmos transistor becomes pretty simple and i'll show you how so we'll use the below graph so this is the graph that we had derived we had done the spice simulations also for this kind of graphs so you have idsn over here you have vdsn and you have vgsn the next step is to convert these two to a function of input and output voltage and it's very simple you just need to convert all your vgsn you need to replace all your vgsns over here to v in you need to replace all your all your vdsn to v out and that's it you will be getting the nmos load curve it becomes pretty simple over here okay so if you see if if, if you do by a by a step by step process vgsn is equal to v in so whatever you see as value of vgsn those will be exactly the value of v in and vdsn will be exactly as v out so just replace it's just a matter of replacing the names here so you you take this curve you change the names so the next step is to so this will be called as the load curve for nmos the next step is to take these two load curves we'll take we'll remove the uh, equations that is not needed so we'll take these two load curves we'll we'll take this nmos uh, we'll take the cmos inverter and we'll try to get the voltage transfer characteristics the final step is to get the voltage transfer characteristics of this particular cmos inverter so it's pretty simple now we have everything as a function of v in and v out it's just the matter of merging these two curves in the right fashion okay so that will take a, an, an amount of time so we'll we'll uh, what we'll do we'll take this we'll take these two curves merge it and get the and derive the voltage transfer characteristics for cmos inverter so let's try to do all this in the next video thank you